Hi everyone, I want to talk to you today about cystic fibrosis. I call it the trouble of many. By the time we are done, you understand why. Please follow. Cystic fibrosis is a very serious genetic disorder. In the past, People don't live very long, but nowadays with a lot of interventions, people live up to 38 years old. Can't handle sodium chloride, so they produce sticky and thick mucus. It is also called by some as fibrocystic disease of the pancreas. Lungs, pancreas that will lead to diabetes mellitus, Decrease in growth, blockage of tears, infertility will all be addressed. It is a genetic disorder and I will tell you more about that. However, despite all these troubles, the brain is intact. The brain is never affected. There are many clinical features of cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis patients are low in sodium chloride because it is lost in the skin. They are dehydrated because the sodium that should retain fluid is already lost in sweat. The mucus that will be formed, which will be sticky and thick, will allow for bacterial growth, will form a kind of needles for bacteria. That accounts for so many infections that you will have, particularly respiratory tract. It's possible that cystic fibrosis patients will be wheezing. Some will wrongly diagnose them to be asthmatic. The sinuses will be affected, and by that, they will start snoring. Gallbladder could be blocked, and Mucus could block the intestine, forming aisles and constipation. The lungs are mostly affected along with the pancreas, and when the lungs are affected, they present with clinical features of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And here, emphysema in particular with bullying hyperinflation, air trapping, core pulmonary because the right heart failure will predispose upon the lung pathology and there will be hemoptysis, the sputum will be stained with blood. Sticky mucus will serve as needles for staphylococcus virus and pseudomonas and the host of other bacteria. Upper respiratory tract problem will lead to snoring because the sinuses will be blocked and there is possibility of sinusitis. When the pancreas is affected with the obstruction of free flow of the pancreatic enzymes, digestion is impaired, so staturia and fast smelling stools. Liver will also suffer with the blockage of gallbladder, leaving to cholelithiasis. Intestine is not spared with meconium hylos leading to constipation and intestinal obstruction. Phalympian tubes are blocked in women, while the fast difference will be blocked in men leading to a span. When it is on the skin, you can use additional salt when you are losing sort through sweat. You can check the bottom of a child or anyone with cystic fibrosis there is possibility of rectal prolapse. When you take electrolytes or acid there will be electrolyte imbalance. Like I said earlier, there's that possibility of smell well obstruction and these good people can die young from recurrent pneumonia. This is a serious problem.
the inheritance is autosomal recessive. More males are affected than females. They are in cystic fibrosis transmembranous competency regulator, which is the main trouble genetically. So it's not functioning well. Career parents are healthy. Therefore, when career father and career mother should marry, they will be healthy. But in each pregnancy they produce, there is a probability of giving birth to a child with cystic fibrosis as high as 25% or 1 over 4. It is common among wives of Northern European descent, but can be found in all races worldwide. The infertility is a concern to many. More males are infertile, more than 90% of them, but the less females are infertile, about 40% of below, and poverty could be delayed in them. What is the pathophysiology of this condition? As what kind of glands secrete and they, uh, they use dots to get the content of whatever they produce to where it is used, the target organs. Since the fibrosis trans membranous contingency regulator is needed for the exocrine glands to function well to control in and out of sodium and water. This cystic fibrosis trans membranous contingency regulator is not working well here. Secretions are not thin, but they are thick. They cannot handle sodium, so the mucus is thick and sticky. Thick mucus blocks tubes and passages for many exocrine enzymes and tubes. That is why when a blood starts in pancreas, we have starturia. When that happens in liver, we have glyceratasis. And when it happens in intestine, we have meconium virus, intestine, constipation, and small bowel absorption. The sticky mucus, like I said earlier, will serve as needles for staphylococcus aureus, pseudomonas, and any other bacteria. So, if a child is given birth to by a career father and career mother who will be elderly and they won't know anything at birth. The first thing to note is is this child having meconium? Is there any respiratory distress? Then start thinking to rule out cystic fibrosis. I'm not saying all children that present with this uh, cystic fibrosis uh, children, no, but if it is in a community where it is predominantly found, white uh, European descent, you can be thinking. Then, this screening, genetic screening could even be done before the age of two years and that will help. You can tell the mother or the father to taste the sweat from the child. If it is salty, then we are in a big trouble with cystic fibrosis. There's possibility of failure to try. So they will have low fat absorption because the pancreatic enzymes are not working well. So there will be decreased weight and recurrent pneumonia. How do we make the diagnosis? Diagnosis is that of chloride sweat test. A caffeine could be given that will stimulate sweat production. Normally, the chloride 
in the sweat should be less than 40 millimoles per liter. But anything greater than 60 millimoles per liter is strongly suggestive at first time. That you can't do it once and make that diagnosis. Okay? So a repeat of that chloride test is required. If it's greater than 60 millimoles per liter again, that is another day entirely, then it is diagnostic. But you can confirm it definitively by doing genetic testing to establish CF, TCR anomalies. What are the differential diagnoses of cystic fibrosis? In other words, you have done your cholesterol test and is high, but you've not done the genetic testing. And the mother and the father are already panicking. You may be able to tell them, that, no, okay, not all the time that this is. It's not only found here. It could be found in other conditions. What are they? It could be anorexia nervosa in some young age people. It could be nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. It could be apogammaglobulinemia, which will increase chloride and give a false positive result. It could be as a result of adrenal failure. There's possibility of hypothyroidism here. Atopic dermatitis along the part that you Place of pain can give that. And of course, ribosomal anomaly or clinifetal syndrome can also produce like this. So you need to ask questions around all these other possible causes, then you do your genetic testing. Just to be sure before the child or the individual is labeled to be having cystic fibrosis. There are atypical presentations of, uh, of cystic fibrosis. The atypical cystic fibrosis could be normal or having abnormal sweat chloride. So imagine somebody is having normal chloride and it's not presenting in a classical way. It's possible that the individual could still be having good pancreatic function, so no statoria. Chronic sinusitis and this is pharma. is present with or without long obstruction symptoms and recurrent inflammation. So it's not all the time we are going to find everything on clinical features. In all of them. So, atypical presentation is possible. By the time you do your sweat chloride, that is normal, but there are six suspicious, do the genetic testing. How can we treat this condition? First and foremost, there is no cure yet. For a good relief, you can do chest physiotherapy twice weekly, once before breakfast and two hours after supper. Major treatment we give, uh, they are all supportive. Give your bronchodilators so that the, the, bron the bronchi are open now and the thick bronchus be able to flow. You give pancreatic enzymes because the pancreas is destroyed and the enzymes are needed for proper digestion. Give antibiotics because the thick mucus has served as needles for bacterial invasion and growth. Mucolytics, so that to break down the mucus and make them thin, something that should be happening naturally, which is no longer happening in them. Give flu and pneumococcal vaccines. Lacetics, because meconomyelos leading to constipation is common. And of course, if diabetes mellitus is already diagnosed there, you treat appropriately.
it is generally a multidisciplinary approach involving respiratory therapists, pulmonologists, endocrinologists who take care of the pancreas problem and general insufficiency, and so on, gastroenterologists because the patient will be complaining of constipation, reproductive specialists because of infertility in the males and females, psychologists because the family will be under stress, the patient could be depressed. The ideal thing is actually working towards the lung transplant in these people. If they are lucky to have one, then because the trouble is a lot with the pancreas and the lungs. In conclusion, find out about cystic fibrosis association in your community. Eat well and enjoy your life as long as you have the opportunity to. I'm wishing you and all the caregivers and family members that are supporting you a, a, a good time and um, identifying with them in their stress. Thank you.